Welcome back to the Student River Podcast. I am your host, Luke Stokes. Thanks for joining us once again. Today, we're going to be starting a new series. And I don't know if this is going to be two, three, four, I don't know how many episodes we're going to be doing, but we're going to dive into the topic of websites. Because let's face it, guys, if you're in the kids' activity space, uh, gymnastics, dance, swim, martial arts, your websites. Now, there are exceptions, but on the whole, they're bad, like really bad. And so I want to help you out a little bit uh, and kind of help you navigate uh, as you look to build a new website, as you look to revamp what it is that you have, help you navigate how to make decisions on what your website should have, Um, the different functionality and features and um, conversion elements to really not only give you a website that looks nice, which we all want by default. We want a website that looks really nice, that's on brand, but we want it to be effective, right? We want it to uh, serve our community well, serve our parents well. Can they find the information that they're after? Um, Can we help them? Can the website help them facilitate making decisions for potential prospects and people? And so I want to help you navigate some of these waters. Um, Look, I mean, the the Olympics are coming up. They're right around the corner. Uh, So depending on when you're watching this, we're in the first quarter of 2020 here. uh, And the Olympics are this summer. And all eyes are going to be watching your given activities. And consequently, you're going to have kids inspired by the results that they see on their television. And so you're going to have parents like you see every four years, but you're going to have parents looking online at your brand. And so now's the time to make that first impression good. But Even if you remove the Olympics, let's say we're post-Olympics and you're listening to this in 2021 or or whatever it might be, the website is still your your first impression. It's still where they find out a lot about you because they're going to be looking up your activity in their area. And you just want to make sure that you're putting your best foot forward. In other words, if they're comparing you versus your competition who's across town or across the street, from just a, a gut level response when they look at your website versus your competitors what are they seeing right what are they what are you portraying as your brand what are you portraying as your culture and ultimately can you walk them through the process of coming in and experiencing what it is that you do and making sure that your website helps facilitate that so as we move forward here i want you to keep something in mind because There's a little known piece of this, unless you're specifically on the web development side, that you need to understand. And that is the rule of eight. And what it is, is you have eight seconds. Once a visitor lands on your website, you have eight seconds to convince them that they should stay and continue to use your website to find the information that they're after. Now, eight seconds is not much time. That was about eight seconds. Now, in silence, when you're listening to this, it feels like an eternity. But if you stop and think about how long you actually have to to convince somebody, how how much information can a person consume in eight seconds? A lot, and yet not much at all. And so we need to realize that we have a very short window to get our visitors to get our visitors to make the decision to stay and to continue to move forward. So um, a little bit about my background here as it relates to websites, because I know that you guys know that I'm I'm real competent on the marketing side. It's what we do. We don't do websites uh, at Cascade Conversion, but I come from a very strong website background, e-commerce specifically. 
um, over the last decade and a half, I have built multiple e-commerce sites um, and have, uh, have scaled them to very large entities. And so I understand website conversion. I understand um, <clears throat> how to get the customer to do what it is that you want them to do once they land on the page. I understand the branding behind it, the look, the feel. I get this topic very, very intimately. And so, um, you know, I'm not sure that uh, you would call uh, me to consult on website design, but I'm, I, I am an authority when it comes to understanding what it is that your website needs to look like and, uh, and, and how it needs to operate, okay? Um, so here's how I want to break this down today. When a person lands on your website, you have eight seconds. And there's three questions that we're going to ask as a website visitor. Now, these three questions aren't like consciously out loud, but these are three questions that on a subroutine level or on the subconscious level, we're asking about your website, okay? And so we need to be able to answer these three questions. Um, and before I get to that though, I want to talk about some of the mistakes that I see out there because I see a lot of websites that are just bad, meaning they just look like they were built in 1997 by a, a high school student. And it's time to update it. It's time to revamp what it is that you are putting out there into the world and then you also need to kind of change your mindset a little bit from a standpoint of like redoing your website is something that you're probably going to need to do every three to five years. It just is. Technology and website changes. Um, you know, the process in which people evaluate websites from a consumer standpoint doesn't move that much, but their expectation on how a website works does because they start seeing other uh, website environments, they start seeing other website design and design changes, just like fashion changes, just like, you know, design in all areas change, so does website design. And so it's just one of those things that you just need to, you know, relegate yourself to the fact that every three to five years, you're going to need to update it and redo it. And so when you're choosing a website, choose something that can be easily reskinned. Okay. Um, that's not custom coded, uh, that you, that way you don't have to go out and spend 10 or $15,000 every time you can just have a new design put on the same content that you have. And that way you can always keep it fresh. And there's a lot of different options out there. I'm not getting into that right now, but just a, a little nugget there, you know, make sure it's something that you can easily reskin as design changes. But some of the mistakes I see confusing layouts, Meaning, you know, the tabs, the buttons, what do I click on, the images, the the colors used, the, the fonts used, the font colors used. It's just confusing. Uh, a lack of clarity, like where do you want me to go and what do you want me to do and what are you trying to, to communicate to me? Um, you know, trying to give too much info on your homepage and trying to have too many options and trying to be everything to everything, everybody and not having a clear path of, of where to go next and you know, archaic design, we talked about that. You know, these are some of the things that I see out there that really are preventing people from buying into what it is that you're doing. And I know that might seem like a, maybe even an extreme statement, but your consumer today is evaluating you and is evaluating the quality of your brand based on the quality of the assets that you put out there. In other words, if someone walks into your facility and it is fresh and it's clean and it smells nice and the equipment is in uh, good order and you know there's a new desk and everybody's got a smile and they're all wearing the same shirts, there's, there's a bit of like, okay, these guys have it together. But that also extends into what you put out into the community as well from your websites and your brochures and your business cards and, and everything. There should be a cohesiveness to it all, okay? And so having it be kind of all over the place and haphazard is really not doing you any favors. Okay, let's talk about these three questions. So there's three questions that your website 
must be able to answer in that short window or you're going to lose your potential visitor, your potential student to the next website, to somebody else that does have it together, okay? So the first question that they land, when they land, the first question that they ask themselves is, am I where I thought I was going to be? In other words, what do you do? Now, this isn't like, hmm, I wonder what website I clicked on. What do they do? No, they know where they're going. They either clicked on a link from the web, whether that was an ad, whether that was your Facebook page, whether that was uh, you know, a search engine result, or they typed it in directly, you know, yourbusinessandbrand.com, right? So they directly navigated to your page. So they're landing on your website coming from somewhere else, right? So there is this expectation of what it is that they're going to see. In other words, am I where I thought it was going to be? If you're a gymnastics brand, when they land, can they tell right off the bat, oh, yep, this, this is the, the gymnastics gym that I was looking for. You know, this, this is exactly what I was after, okay? Can they answer that question right when they land? Can they confirm that they are where they thought they should be? Now, put yourself in their shoes. How is this processed? Because they're not actually asking what it is that these guys do, right? They're not asking that question, but they are looking for confirmation that they're where they thought they should be. So if you put yourself in their shoes, how is this communicated? Okay, relevant images of your activity is one, right? If you've got imagery uh, or videos of, you know, we're, we were talking about gymnastics, so let's just stay there. You know, if you've got uh, kids on the floor doing gymnastics routines or on, you know, different, um, different equipment, doing different types of, uh, of, of skill sets, they can automatically connect the dots. Okay, yeah, this is a gymnastics website. This is where I thought I was going to be. Another way that this is communicated is through copy. Copy is what we refer to as all the words on your website. The words as a, a, a global you know, concept we refer to as copy. And so the copy on your website, the headline, the supporting copy, so on and so forth. And the headline is like the big, bold text, like the main thought that they see when they land. This is another way for them to, for you to communicate um, what it is that you do. And to confirm in their mind that it is exactly where they intended on being. So that's the first thing that they, and this, this happens very quickly, as you can imagine. And, and just think about this. If you're shopping for a handbag or you're going to Amazon or, you know, you're doing your own search uh, on an article for the a news or whatever it might be, the very first thing that you're doing, you're processing is, am I where I thought I was going to be? So that's the first question, what it is that you do. The second question though, is actually where we have to get a little bit more strategic because that one's, that one can seem a bit obvious, right? Maybe you know, it's in your logo, maybe it's in your, your header banner image, um, your URL name, right? There's some things that kind of give that away and that can be a little bit easier to answer. The next two questions though, is where I see most people mess it up. The next one is, why should I stay? Why should I stay? Okay, yes, granted, you're a gymnastics gym, I'm landing on your website, I get that, I'm where I thought I should be. But now why should I stay here? Okay. In other words, what is your value proposition to me? What's in it for me? Is it clear what you do uniquely? Do you even have a value proposition? In other words, why should they stay and investigate you versus clicking their back button, okay, going back to the Google search engine and finding your competitor who's the next link away, right? This is not just why they should stay, but, but, but why you, okay? Because if they're coming from a Google search engine, they have multiple options that they can click on especially if they're clicking or, you know, they're searching for gymnastics in Seattle, gymnastics in Chicago, whatever that might be, there's more than one option that came up in that search. 
So they're not only just saying, why should I stay on this website in this particular moment, but why you in this particular moment? What do you do differently than all your competitors? And one of the things that I see uh, brands do wrong in trying to answer this question, and I don't think they're, they're consciously trying to answer this question. I just think that this is something that they put out there as like a credibility piece. But I see them using facts or features about their business to try and add authority. In other words, you know, uh, the headline, meaning the, the bold text at the top of the website saying things like, serving the Seattle community since 1969, okay? Or, you know, the best darn gymnastics gym in the Puget Sound area, okay? I'm just using terms for, for my area around here. Those things don't convince people to stay. Those are, those are features. Those are, those are pieces of, of your history. Those are, those are certainly elements of your brand, but they're not, they're not psychological sales pieces to get them to stay. So what is it that you do differently than the next guy? This could be about a philosophy that you have about kids' activities in general. This could be the way you approach uh, instruction. Uh, this could be, you know, there's, there's a number of different ways that you can go about this. But it should be the core identity and belief and benefit that someone should consider when doing business with you. Okay. Now, this is predominantly going to be communicated through a headline, meaning bold text right at the top of your website. Okay. You have uh, uh, what we call a hero image, a primary image, you know, that's usually on some sort of, of banner right at the top. Um, and you can do a rotating banner. I, I often choose to not do a rotating banner because then. You know, there's a little bit of like, you don't know what exactly is going to motivate your visitor to stay. Um, so I kind of tend to lean towards a static banner that always has the same impression every single time when somebody lands and then doesn't change. And instead put your other things that you're trying to communicate further down the fold. Um, the fold is a term that we use in web development to determine what the screen is, okay, from the top of the screen to the bottom of the screen before you have to scroll. That's considered the fold. So you have above the fold and you have below the fold. So above the fold, these uh, uh, you need to answer these questions above the fold. What do you do? Am I where I thought I was going to be? And why should I stay? What do you do differently than the other guy that's in the result that's right beside you if I click my back button? And this is going to be communicated in a headline. It's weighted, and I'll talk a little bit more about weight here in a second, but it's weighted. It's bolder, it's larger, it's darker, it's brighter, but without getting crazy, right? Don't make it neon green, but it's bolder than all the rest of the information on your website that you're trying to, to communicate. What is it that you do that's in it for me that would cause me to want to stay? Okay, tracking with me? So, what do you do? Why should I stay? The next one, the third one, is where or what do you want me to do next? What do you want me to do next? Or where do you want me to go on your website? What's the next action you're wanting me to take? In this question, we're talking about path, meaning, what is the route that we want them to take on your website? And I can hear you say, well, you know, everybody that's coming to my website uh, is coming for a different reason. I get that. But we have to go all the way, we have to zoom out and we have to consider who the masses are. Because if you're trying to cater to your current customer, they're already your customer. 
they're gonna you don't don't make it hard to find what it is that they're after but they're incentivized they're already paying you to find what it is that they're after right whether that's scheduling whether that's you know closures whether that's um you know registrations or class opportunities or whatever it might be if they're already doing business with you they're incentivized to dig a little bit deeper so we want to make this obvious for the lowest common denominator, which means this is somebody that knows nothing about what it is that you're all about. Where do you want them to go next? What do you want them to do? What's the next action that they should take? Now, this is this is a weight conversation. And what I mean by weight, and I, I referenced it in, you know, why should I stay? But what I mean by weight is you have to use contrast and, you know, bolding to communicate your highest propositions, the, the actions that you want them to take. And so we're going to use uh, buttons, big buttons that, that direct them and instruct them what we want them to do. Maybe you want them to watch your intro video. So we're going to make the intro video the next obvious piece right in front of them, you know, and, and the, it could go from a button to the video, right? The button maybe brings up the window of the video, you know, or maybe the video is just right there next to it and you want them to play that next. Ultimately, it's going to come down to calls to action. In other words, what are you instructing them to do next? Take that visitor by the hand and walk them through the path that you want them to take. So maybe that is simply starting by signing up for a discount with you guys. You know, hey, give me your name, email address, you know, your child's age, uh, you know, what part of town you're in, right? You know, whatever information would be valuable for you to have. And we will give you a free trial class. Or we will give you a discounted trial class. You can get a trial class for $10. Or maybe, you know, sign up and you get free registration. Or sign up and you get, you know, $50 off your first month. Or, you know, sign up and you, 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 there's a lot of different things that you, can, that you can do. So maybe your very first path is, can I get that person that's just investigating me to exchange information with me for something of value? That's something that would be of interest to them. You know, so there's, you know, you know, there's calls to action to get them to sign up, but this takes a, a bit of thought. In other words, what do you want that first step to be? Maybe that first step is, you know, I want them to choose what, you know, what program, you know, within, within my offerings they're interested in and then find availabilities. And, you know, maybe there's a, a path that's specific to you guys. You know, my recommendation is exchange that information so that you can continue the conversation after they leave. Because chances are they're going to leave to go check out their competitor anyways. And you just want to make sure that you've made a good enough impression with them that they come back. Well, the other way that you can do this is, you know, you know, get information from them by offering them some sort of exchange in value so that you have the opportunity to continue that conversation after they leave. So maybe that's the first thing that you want them to do. And I talked a little bit about this in previous episodes where we talked about the four phases, the first one being a lead magnet. And this is what you want them to do next. But you can stack these, right? You can say, okay, first thing I want you to do is watch this video. And then after you watch this video and you learn a little bit about the heart, about why we exist and why we're here and what we're different, then maybe I want you to you know, click this button and sign up. Or then maybe I want you to click this button and start the process of, of figuring out what class you should take with us uh, and what availabilities there are. Or, you know, next, I want you to just click this button and call me, right? I want you to just call in and talk to us because that's going to be the best way that we can communicate this, right? There's a number of different things that you can do. So there's three questions you must answer. And here's the reality of it. Every landing page that they can come to must answer these questions questions. Am I where I thought I was going to be? What do you do? Why should I stay? And what do you want me to do next? Every page should have a, a direct action that you're wanting them to take, a, a next 
best step. So, and, and I think of, when I said, you know, every landing page should have this, think of this in terms of what is going to be the page that they land on when they see you for the first time. Some might say, well, that's my homepage. And the homepage is definitely probably your most popular landing page. But if someone, for example, is searching, and again, just sticking with, you know, the gymnastics example here, you know, if someone, instead of, you know, searching out gymnastics in Seattle, if someone is searching out, you know, ninja classes in Seattle or cheer, cheer classes in Seattle or summer camps in Seattle, your website might come up, but it might represent a different page. Okay. It might bring up your summer camp page, you know, and this is in like dance studios. This is really obvious because maybe this is like hip hop classes, right? Ballet classes, right? And there's a lot of different pages that Google could serve to, um, to that visitor from your website. And so you need to think about this in terms of every page that they could land on. So when they land on your summer camp page, does it answer the same three questions? Am I where I thought I was going to be? Why should I stay? And what do you want me to do next? Okay. Every page needs to ha- needs to answer this. And as one page leads to the next, right? You take them from, you know, the home page to, you know, find a class that that works for your family and it's the next page. It has to answer the same thing. Are they can they tell they're on the class page? Right? Why do why should they stay on this page? Is it easy for them to navigate? And then what do you want them to do next? How am I how are you encouraging them to navigate this? All right. So I think that you can see that there's a process here without even thinking about the specific elements and colors and, you know, menu systems and functionality. From a very foundational standpoint, your your website and every page therein needs to answer these three questions. Now, how do you know, this is the last thing here, how do you know whether or not your website is actually answering these questions and needs to be overhauled? So there's a few things that you can do. And... Uh, these are, again, these are foundational concepts, but this is something that you must do to understand whether or not your website is hitting the mark. So if you just had a website redesign and you're like, all right, perfect. You know, this is, uh, you know, we just had this done. I'm ready for the Olympics. Here we go. But these things that Luke's talking about, like, I'm not sure I've ever processed my website through these lenses. How do I know if I'm hitting the mark? Okay, here's how you do it. There are three options that I'm going to give you here to evaluate whether or not your website is answering these questions. The first one is through uh, analytics. And the easiest way to do this is Google. So you need to have Google Analytics installed on your website. This is a very simple piece of code. It goes on every page of your website. It's free. And this is just foundational to having a website in today's day and age is Google Analytics. You need to have, and you just go to Google and and Google Google Analytics, and there is a process of getting Google Analytics installed on your website. You need to have this. Then from there, what you'll be able to do is you then will be able to see, you'll have insight into exactly how people are navigating your website. So you can do path tracking, meaning you can see exactly from this page, what page do they go to next most often? And then where do they go from there? And then where do they go from there? And you'll be able to see, it'll show you the paths that people take through your website. It'll also show you what's called bounce rates. Bounce rate is somebody that comes to your website and immediately leaves. Now that can be any given page, um, but this is specifically the most usable when it comes to your landing pages, right? Your homepage and maybe your, your subcategory pages that, that have a uh, search engine optimization and are being seen uh, when they, they type in your different categories, there, there's a bounce rate. And if you have a high bounce rate, meaning people come and immediately back up, if you have a bounce rate in the 70 percentile, shoot, if you have a bounce rate in the 50 percentile, right? It's, it's too high. You're missing the mark. You're not answering these questions. You're not making it obvious on what it is that you do, 
why they should stay and where you want them to go next. Your bounce rate, you're now you're not gonna get everybody to not bounce, okay? If you have a bounce rate in the 30s, that's good. That means 70% of the people stay. And so that's another way that you can tell is by looking at your bounce rates. And the, your Google Analytics will tell you all these things. So if you don't have that, get it. The next thing that you can do is use a service called Crazy Egg. Now, I believe Crazy Egg has a free option. They also have a paid option. But what this is, is a heat map for your website. And what happens is it tracks the eye path. In other words, what on the website catches their eye? And the way they do this is by tracking the mouse cursor because believe it or not, inherently, we all move the mouse where our eyes are going. We don't just go to a website and then move our hands back and then just look at the website like this. We actually, we're looking for things to click on and we're, we're kind of, we're tracking with the mouse. And so they can track eye path by tracking the cursor. And what this does is this gives you insight into weight. In other words, what is standing out the most on your website? It'll heat map it. What are they looking at? It'll also show you what they're trying to click on. They'll, tr they'll show you that, oh gosh, that looks like a play button for a video, but it's not. That looks like a button. That looks like something that they should click on. And, or they're clicking on things that you don't want them to click on first, right? It's not the most obvious thing. It's not the thing that you want them to do first. And so this is a way that you can run a, run a filter on is your website communicating and are your customers taking the path that you want them to take? Is the most weighted thing on the page that you're hoping is the most weighted thing on the page actually the thing that's getting their attention? Or is it something else that's flashing or in a different color or contrasting more? And so it's a great way to be able to see what people are doing. And then the third thing is you could do actual usability tests. Now, there's a service out there called Fiverr. Uh, it's F-I-V-E-R-R, -R, <clears throat> that you can hire people for five bucks to do all these different kinds of things. And it used to be everything on the website was $5. They've now evolved a little bit beyond that to more of a, a gig type website where you can outsource different things from design to, you know, video editing to all different kinds of things. But you can also hire people on this website to do usability tests. And what you do is you give them a series of questions. Essentially, you can get them to say, you know, you can say, hey, when you landed, when you first landed on my website, what was the first thing that stood out to you? What did you think I wanted you to do next? Did you understand why we're unique, what we do differently than everybody else, right? You can, and you can craft whatever kind of questions that you want, but you can pay people to actually do a usability test for a very inexpensive price and go and walk through your website. And you can either have them do it with the questions in hand, or you can have them do a usability test and then take, you know, essentially a quiz at the end of, you know, two, three, four, five questions, whatever you want that to be, and see if they can answer it. And this gives you an insight into the actual human psychology because now you're, you're getting feedback as well. Oh, no, I didn't see that. I actually saw this, right? So you can have a little bit of dialogue with them as well. And so that's another way that you can track this stuff. Here's the point, guys. We started with this. You got a very short window, a very short window to convince them to stay. Is your website doing the job? Are you answering these questions? Are you, are, is it clear what it is that you guys do? Is it clear why they should stay? And is it clear what you want them to do next? Guys, if your website answers all these questions, and every page answers all these questions, you are going to have very happy website visitors that take the action that you want them to take, that see the things that you want them to see, and ultimately do business with you because the experience with you is effortless. It's like you were reading their mind. It's like you were entering the conversation going on in their mind. And when that happens, there's an immediate connection. These guys get me. They understand exactly the questions that I'm asking. It was so easy to do business with you. It was so easy to sign up with you. When you hear those types of things, you've nailed it. Hopefully this helps. Hopefully this gives you a little bit of a foundation and some questions to go ask your website. Thanks for joining me today. Until next time, make your website what you want it to be.